Hi friends, John Wesley here from the Sense of Shelf podcast, and I want to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is what I use to record this delightful podcast that I am very thankful you're listening to. And Anchor has all the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And from personal experience, editing from your phone is surprisingly easy and intuitive. And when you when you host your podcast on Anchor, you can distribute it to all the listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It is literally everything you need to make your podcast all in one place, one easy app. And best of all, it is totally free. So if you find yourself thinking that you may want to start a podcast, I recommend you download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get yourself started. Thank you for listening and God bless. Hello friends, John Wesley here. And just a little message before this episode starts. Uh, During the episode, I mentioned that the series that I want to do will be titled Authors at War. And then I say almost instantly that that will probably change. And lo and behold, it did. And the title I've come up with is The Pen Made Mightier by the Sword. And as well as discussing authors' direct experiences in wars and how it affected their works, I'm going to talk about some authors who were influenced by global conflict and by global politics, even if they didn't directly serve or fight in the military at the time. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this series. With this first author you're going to listen to, I don't consider myself a fan of him, although I do, I believe, get a little caught up in the mythology around him. Uh, I like, I really love, it's Ernest Hemingway, I love A Farewell to Arms, and I like For Whom the Bell Tolls, and that's about it for my my appreciation for his, my, my joy and like how I enjoy his work, but I do respect what he is and what he did in literature. Uh, there's no denying that he's one of the best authors, or one of the most well-known and famous and appreciated authors of the 20th century. So that was, that was it. That's just my little message that um, the series will be a little different from what I originally envisioned and the title is different. And please don't come at me if you're not a fan of Hemingway. He can be quite polarizing. I like some of his work, but um, th- there's just a mythology around him. Uh, about his exploits and his and some of the things he did. And a lot of people get caught up in that. So, as usual, I always welcome constructive criticism or respectful comments. So, you can feel free to email me or message me. Um, and that's about it. So, I hope you enjoy this episode and the whole series going forward. Uh, at the time of this recording, I have, I think, five episodes written and and one recorded um and i'll be hopefully doing a lot more than that so i hope you enjoy these will be shorter than my normal episodes maybe like 15 20 minutes depending on the content so i hope you enjoy thank you for listening and god bless hello friends my name is john wesley and thank you for joining me for the sense of shelf podcast I've decided I'm going to do a little stretch of episodes on a specific topic. It just sort of came to me the other day, and it's something I'd like to research a little more myself and bring that information to you. I'm going to do a little stretch about authors and their experiences serving in wars and the influence that had on their works. So these will be... Shorter episodes than I've usually been doing. Usually I ramble on for an hour about a topic or I discuss a book with a guest. So I'm going to do these. They're not going to take long. They're just going to be little brief summaries of an author's experiences and how that translates to their work. And the first one I'm going to do 
is the probably the most obvious one as far as war influencing the work, and that's Ernest Hemingway. Now, a lot of the information I have regarding his time serving is taken and paraphrased from the National Archives website. And then just information I have on my own about his books. I do like... I, I like two of his books immensely. And then one, not so much, out of the ones I'm going to speak about. So, to start with, Ernest Hemingway served in World War I. He volunteered as, as an ambulance driver in Italy with the American Red Cross. In June of 1918... He was injured by mortar fire from the Austrians. In a letter home, he described the mortar as... Well, he described it as the following. Then there was a flash, as when a blast furnace door is swung open and a roar that started white and went red. Now, he carried... After this mortar blast and his injury, he still carried an Italian soldier to safety in spite of his own wounds and was injured again by machine gun fire. He was one of the first Americans to receive the Silver Medal of Valor from the Italian government. While recuperating in a Milan hospital, he fell in love with an, Ameri- with an American Red Cross nurse I'm sure that may sound familiar to those of you who have read his books, named Agnes von Karowski. This romance serving as the genesis to my favorite novel of his, A Farewell to Arms. In reading his novels, it's very easy to see how he felt about the war, and more importantly, a soldier's life post-war. In his own post-war experience, he moved home. He had trouble readjusting because he came back a changed man to a town that was the same as it had always been. Now, his first major novels were The Sun Also Rises and A Farewell to Arms. In The Sun Also Rises, your main character is Jake Barnes, an American World War I veteran dealing with combat wounds that left him impotent. This character stays in Europe and epitomizes what has been come to be known as the Lost Generation. The themes to this novel are along the lines of morality, faith, and insecurity, specifically male insecurity, and also war and loss being in the background of this all along. And then there's A Farewell to Arms, which is a story of an injured American soldier and his doomed love affair with an English nurse. A Farewell to Arms has been called the premier American war novel from World War I. In the novel, Lieutenant Frederick Henry, the main character, is injured by mortar fire. While recuperating, he finds a nurse whom he had previously had a romantic fling with working at the hospital where he is recuperating. They fall in love. When Henry finds out his love, Catherine, is pregnant, he is sent back to the front. He has, a, he has a few traumatic experiences during this deployment and decides to desert. Henry and Catherine move to Switzerland. When Catherine is in the hospital for delivering, there are complications and the baby is stillborn and then Catherine passes. The themes, again, being war and love, and the loss as a result of war. Then you have another fiction novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls, in which it's documented he did a great job of showing both sides of the Spanish Civil War. For Whom the Bell Tolls is about Robert Jordan an American living in Spain that volunteers to fight for the Republic against Franco's fascist forces. Hemingway uses his own experiences in the Civil War in this novel, war again being so prominent a theme, as well as love during war. 
In the novel, Jordan falls for Maria, a young woman in the guerrilla camp. And while on a mission, his, friend, his closest friend in the camp loses his life. And Jordan himself is mortally wounded and has to part from Maria, who has reciprocated his love. Jordan stays behind to not slow down his comrades, comrades, I apologize, and in the hopes to slow the oncoming enemies. And then, so this is all against the backdrop of World War I, which Hemingway all obviously was active in. And then we have Across the River and Into the Trees, with World War II as its backdrop, and it's set in Venice at the end of the war. During World War II, Hemingway was a civilian correspondent and was present at the storming of Omaha Beach, although he did not land with the troops. And his work as a correspondent earned him a bronze star during World War II. So, taking all these into account, it's so easy to see the influence of these war experiences on all of his works. And if you were to read more about his later years, how those experiences contributed to his mental and physical health. But his early life gave the world one of the greatest authors it has seen. World War II was really a watershed moment for literature, and Hemingway for sure was at the top of the crest of that wave caused by, caused by it. So those three novels, A Farewell to Arms, The Sun Also Rises, For Whom the Bell Tolls, those three are his biggest novels and all deal with war as well as the loss of love as a result of war. Now, while I obviously detest the idea of war and do not glorify it in any way, Hemingway may not have become the writer he did were it not for his experiences and the profound influence it had on his life. And commenting on his experience many years later, Hemingway writes, When you go to war as a boy, you have a great illusion of immortality. Other people get killed, not you. Then, when you are badly wounded the first time, you lose that illusion and you know it can happen to you. After being severely wounded two weeks before my 19th birthday, I had a bad time until I figured out that nothing could happen to me that had not happened to all men before me. Whatever I had to do, men had always done. If they had done it, then I could do it too. And the best thing was not to worry about it. That's a direct quote from Hemingway regarding war, war experiences, and his personal feelings and experience with what had happened to him. So that's going to be it. This wasn't going to be like a full biographical podcast about Hemingway. If you want that, I mean... By all means, message me and I'll do more about Hemingway. He's such an interesting person. But there's also a good book out about him, if I remember correctly. I believe it's... I'm going to look it up right now. I didn't think to write this down before. I believe it's called The Traitor, The Soldier, The Spy. Um, but I read it a few years ago. It's a, it's a really interesting book about Hemingway and all of uh, all of his experiences. So this was the first of a little series I want to do of authors and their experiences during the war because there are quite a few that served and there and it's very easy to see the influences that the war had on their works. And it's all books that we all know very well, and authors we all know very well, whether it's Hemingway or Tolkien or even Roald Dahl. So, yes, this was the first of those. They're going to be short little episodes, and I'm kind of just filling air as I try to find this Hemingway biography that I just... Ah, here we go. So, it is by Nicholas Reynolds, and it's Hemingway's Secret Adventures from 1935 to 1961. Writer, sailor, soldier, spy. 
please check that out. That was a very interesting book. Um, so yes, this was the first in that series. I'll do more to come. Like I said, we got Tolkien, we got Roald Dahl, um, Isaac Asimov. There's there's a whole there's a a cornucopia of authors that served in wars that I can choose from. So if you have one you'd like me to talk about, please message me and I will do some research and put together an episode about that author. I thank you for joining me. As always, go to Instagram or Twitter and follow me. That's at Sense of Shelf Pod. And I also have a Gmail if you want to talk to me on that about something you'd like to hear. Sense of Shelf Pod at gmail.com. And wherever you're listening to this, subscribe, like, review, do all of those things. It really helps us out, especially us smaller indie podcasters. I'm sure you did it for your Conan O'Brien podcasts or any other big ones you listen to, but it really helps us indie podcasters out. So please go ahead and do that. And also go check out Ben Hunt over at the Enlightened Pod. He's a good friend. He he loves nerd things. We We nerd out about Tolkien, both on mine and on his podcasts. He talks about Harry Potter, Star Wars, history in general. Um, the, he loves the Beatles. He talks about the Beatles. He has a really funny episode about comic villains, com- like comedic movie villains. You know, your your judge from Caddyshack or your Ben Stiller roles from like Billy, what was it? No, Happy Gilmore, sorry. And Dodgeball and just those types of, those types of villains. There was a really... It's a chaotic episode. There's a lot of laughter, but it's a, it's a funny one. And I appeared on there talking about... I appeared on a separate episode. I believe it's titled Fever Dream, talking about Ralph Bakshi's 1978 animated classic Lord of the Rings movie. And Fever Dream is an apt description. So go check him out at, the, um, at EnlightenedPod1 on Twitter or... On your podcasting platforms, The Enlightened Podcast. Also, always go show my friend Chris Galley some love. Beantown Action Podcasts. He's got two different shows on there. One about gambling and your your odds and fantasy football and different types of bets. And then The Distinguished Gentleman where four mutual... Well, him and three mutual friends of ours... Just They just have a drink and talk about life, music, pop culture, sports, a little of everything. And the important part is they're a diverse group. It is not just, it's not just Chris Galley and photocopies of Chris Galley. It's, it's a diverse group of four guys with their different points of view on everything. And they drink a, a specific bottle of alcohol to go with each episode. I believe the last one was Avion Tequila. All right. Now that I've rambled on about my friends' podcasts and my own social medias that I implore you to go check out and follow, as well as doing all the stuff on whatever platform you're listening to me right now on, that is it for me on this edition of Let's call it Authors in War. Nah, I'll probably change that. But join me next time. Um, I don't know what author I'm going to choose yet, but I'm open to suggestions. So thank you for listening, and God bless.